Another important aspect of Freud's theory, and a controversial one, are the psychosexual stages. According to Freud, we all go through these stages in our development from infancy on. And during each stage, there is a particular area of the body that is the source of pleasure, that the id is uh, essentially pushing you to satisfy. And this is controversial because he calls it psychosexual. So it's an infant. And really, it's mainly in the unconscious. So these sexual urges, these sex drives, essentially we're born with it, according to Freud. And in these particular stages, these urges become fixated in a in like in what is in called an erogenous zone, an area of a body which we find pleasurable. So in the first stage, you have the oral stage, where the mouth is the erogenous zone. And that's essentially where the infant's pleasure is centered upon. Notice here the baby in the picture with a pacifier in its mouth. Uh, basically, infants, 0 to 18 months, will pick things up off the floor and put it into their mouth. That's how they explore the world. And according to Freud, this is where they're getting this sexual pleasure. But again, it's from the unconscious. The child isn't consciously aware of this, but nevertheless the pleasure seeking is centered around the mouth in the oral stage. The anal stage between 18 and 36 months, well there is an important event going on here, potty training. So during this period of time the child is learning to, uh, to eliminate and do it in the right way. They're not just peeing and pooping anywhere they want to like they were before. Now they're going through potty training. And in this case, it could be a stressful period of time. But basically, the pleasure is involved in elimination. So the anus is the source of pleasure here. And essentially, the child enjoys being able to poop where he or she wants. Well, now, during this stage, you know, the potty training could be a stressful period of time in which the child is learning to hold off on, you know, going potty and wait. And it's something, and sometimes this is, you know, unpleasurable, but it's something that the child needs to learn how to do. And eventually the child will learn to be able to use the potty when appropriate. The next stage, according to uh, Freud, is the phallic stage, okay, between three and six years. And this is some pretty in, uh, interesting stuff, pretty controversial. The child's pleasure is focused on the genitals. The child is learning to touch themselves, essentially, and to get pleasure from doing it. And this is essentially what is going on. But now, during this particular stage, there is what is known as the Oedipus Complex, which is where, essentially, the for the boy, the boy is developing a sexual attraction, a desire to possess the mother. And, again, this is still coming from the unconscious here, so it's not like the child is, you know, uh, consciously doing this, but nevertheless it's, there's this source of sexual desire coming from the kid. Uh, the child, the boy, sees the father as a rival. The father is also big and powerful. And therefore, the child sees, the, the boy sees the father as a threat. The boy is afraid, actually, that the um, father is going to cut off his penis. This is actually called castration anxiety. So this castration anxiety, the boy is afraid that when the father finds out his feelings towards his mother, that the father is going to become angry and castrate him. 
Mm. But this is all going on in the unconscious. All this worry and everything is coming out of the unconscious. So how does the child deal with this? Well, the child, the boy, will try to make the father less of an enemy. The boy will try to identify with the father, behave like the father, be like the father. The father will then not be angry at the boy because the boy wanting to be like him. Furthermore, by behaving like his father, by becoming like his father, maybe in the future he'll be able to get a partner like his mother in the future. So the way to resolve, the, you know, fa during the phallic stage, to resolve the Oedipal complex is to essentially, in instead of fearing the father, identifying with him, becoming like him, and that's how you can get through it. Uh, later theorists have talked about the Electra complex, which might be what is going on in girls. With girls, the idea is uh, the girl is attracted to the father. Again, that opposite sex attraction here. And sees the mother as the rival, and the mother as the enemy, but now blames the mother for castrating her. See, she doesn't have a penis, and she blames her mother for it. So, this is actually called penis envy, where the girl actually desires to have the penis that presumably the mother took away from her. And that's what she blames her for. Uh, eventually, to resolve this, the, the child will identify with the mother and kind of get over that particular, uh, you know, anger towards the mother. And uh, it's, it's kind of, a, again, as you can see, this is a very controversial theory. I'm not asking you to believe it, I'm asking you to understand it for this class. So, the oral, the anal, and the phallic stages, those are where the interesting stuff is happening. Uh, and, you know, but, the, but later on you have the latency stage, according to Freud, where, you know, six years old into puberty. The, this is where, it, it's a he calls it a timeout, which, uh, again, there's not much evidence to support that now. But the idea is that the pursuits are not sexual anymore and it's more towards being successful in school and in sports and everything like that. So it's during this time where you're kind of, you know, socializing with others. And your sexuality interest is repressed. At least presumably according to Freud. Finally, the genital stage. This is where you become, you, know, you grow into adolescence and then adulthood. You start forming healthy relationships with you know, partners and essentially you know, develop normally. So this is where your sexuality is reawakened. It's not about masturbation now, it's about developing a sexual relationship, but in, in a healthy context. You're not getting it from your own pleasuring yourself, you're getting it from somebody else. The psychosexual stages, you could end up being fixated on the on one of these stages here. And you could essentially never resolve through it. So for example, someone who has an oral fixation. Maybe they were, when they were breastfeeding, they, the mother essentially stopped the breastfeeding very early on and they went to bottles, but the child still wanted to nurse. And so the child was weaned a bit early. Well, the child might then develop an oral fixation, and as an adult, it might show up in being a chain smoker, or 
you know, having some biting sarcasm, you know, talking too much, opening your mouth a little too sharply, that might be re representative of an oral fixation. A person might also develop an anal fixation and become, as an adult, what we call anal retentive, or, uh, or just simply called anal. And they have these uh, particular characteristics that they're very neat and orderly, they're very stubborn, uh, they're stingy. It's like a, you know, very, these kind of, uh, they really want like a sense of control. And, you know, so we call, the, we call this person anal.